Hi listeners, this is Dan from the Goddess Geek podcast and I'm here to tell you about our Patreon campaign. How would you feel about an extra 30 minutes of me and the lads each and every week? Sounds good? Well, for just £3.30 a month, that could be all yours. All you have to do is go to patreon.com forward slash God is a geek and pledge £3.30 a month and you'll get exclusive access to a bumper edition of the podcast each and every week. Now, I'll let you sit back and enjoy the show. Hello, dear listener, and welcome to the Goddess Geek Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Nails Naylor, and joining me this week is Dan the Murph Murphy and Colm. I don't actually have a nickname for him. Uh Colm English. You, well, the way you said my surname, you could have went maybe with Colm Aha Ahern, because it was very Colm Ahern. <laughs> No. I could have done, I guess. Maybe next week. I, are, you, I are, you, are you a fan of Paris? Do you have. Do, do you have I'm not really, I'm afraid. I, I know, I know, I know, but my dad went to the same school as Steve Coogan. Fuck Fun fact. off, I Dan. Was in, the same, was in the same year Dan. as his younger brother. Dan, hold on, Dan. hold on. Save this. Save this. <laughs> Dan. Dan. That's it. That, that's the story. That's the story. Ah, that's shit, not... really? Yeah, no, no. But, that could have been a great I'll... hook for the Patreon uh, backers. <laughs> well, it could have been, but no, that that is the end. I have, yeah, I may have a good story. So many of my jokes we'll go unnoticed on this podcast. It saddens me. None what of you heard me shouting going, Dan. Dan. Uh-huh. Dan. Uh-huh. The one. The one. Sorry. The one of his yes, jokes. Yes, that made Colin laugh. I win. <laughs> Fuck off. Um, I'm always under Colin, do you, I've actually, do you have a nickname? Is there something people call you? I mean, Irish prick and all. I, I get called Smith. I mean, generally, it'll, they'll just shorten my name to one syllable. So it may be Col or... May, like, rarely, I'm not one of these people that... People don't really refer to me as a hern. Rarely, maybe there's one or two friends that do, but it's, it's rare. I'm generally just call or call them, really. I fair, don't want to have some like enough. Spike or Spider or Nails. Do you know, I don't do want to have what? any badass Look, nickname. I could imagine you as a Spike. I mean, that, that's yeah. a perfect name for you. What, um, what, what does the name what, Colum actually mean? Oh, what does it mean? I think it means Dove. As far, which obviously is what I am. <laughs> I am a, <laughs> I am a Because that dog. is what people think when they look at you. So. Yeah, I, I think, is it... I'm going to have to... Start, I, think, I think it's something... Meaning of the Irish name Colum. Listen. Uh, a Gaelic form of the Latin Columba, meaning dove. Yeah. My, my name means... What does Dan mean? Oh, it's, it's Hebrew. of God or something? It's definitely Hebrew. Yeah. Because it's like Daniel in the Lion's Den, whatever he's called, isn't it? We should really should have saved this for the fucking extra bit, shouldn't we? We need Probably, to. Yeah. <laughs> no, the extra bit is going to have far better content. Than Daniel that. is a masculine given name and a surname of Hebrew origin. It means God is my judge and derives from the two early biblical figures, primarily among them, Daniel from the book of Daniel. Way to Google, dickhead. Wow. Now, games. Um, we we all play games and we have fun with them. And Every now and then. We, we play them just because. And uh, e- I think all three of us have been playing Just Cause Three. We Same have, half. yeah. It's great. Not, not one of my better ones. <laughs> I mean, it was all right. It's just it's Bit very easy to do. A you know, I'm playing Just Cause Three. Just Cause. It's just it's cause. very. It's I know. It just seems it's very low hanging fruit. You know. I, I know, but there's not many things you can. I don't know. There's not many ways to it, link that, is there? Mm, uh. I, I don't know. Um, well, I, well Adams. Adam Strap on his review, I think it was Rico Havoc, which I thought was very good, as in wreaking havoc. Speaking of Rico, where yeah. is he? Because I'm pretty sure they've replaced him, like quite, quite, like fucking overtly, because it isn't the same person anymore, is it? Well, I, I, it's actor or model? Or no, it's meant to be, yeah. but it doesn't look anything fucking like him, does it? I enjoy that this is meant to be him going home and everyone looks like the kind of Mediterranean and kind mm-hmm. of olive skin and stuff. And Nico just looks like a white person with a tan. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Which, you know, kind Let's of not white get into that kind of thing. Yeah. That's little yeah. bit. Little bit. Yeah. I, what's, what, do both of you have a history with the series? Because I don't. Like, I, I probably I, played Just Cause 2 for about 10 or 15 minutes. I played I played about half of Just Cause 2. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot. I mean, you know, just going around causing chaos and stuff like that. Mm. But the problem was that was kind of its only hook. Yeah. Um, yeah. And when that wore off, mm. it got a little bit I, pained. I played the first one. I played quite a bit of the first one as well until it broke on me. But um, I really enjoyed it, actually. I remember, But I remember really liking it because it was something... 
it was like GTA, but more because it was let you be, you know, it's specific, I know GTA is what GTA is, but it's like, and as we just got through, it's like, it's GTA turned up to 11, isn't it? Like, the whole point of it is to just do fucking weird shit and make stuff explode, which was fun. And then I, I missed two. I only played the demo of it and never ended up picking it up. So for me, and I, I've got a feeling I know what a lot of people's complaints are going to be of Just Cause 3, which we'll go on to. But for me, I'm enjoying it loads because I've not, I've had that gap in between them. So it's like going back to it again for me. And it's I enjoy it a lot, to be honest with you. Yeah, see, I suppose with this being my, my first proper kind <clears> of <throat> foray into Just Cause, yeah. I, I mean... Yeah, of course, I enjoy the blowing up stuff and the explo like the explosions. Look oh, the fucking phenomenal! Yeah, like the, the fire amazing, and right? just like oh, I like it's so it, intense. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, when it, shit it flies at your face, it, it is great to like. I don't know. I think maybe it's the second mission or third mission or something where you can have control of like. Um, uh, I don't know. It's like something, uh, so kind of a uh, what do they call it? Like a minigun kind of type yeah, yeah. deal, and you're just fucking shit up. You are just blowing up everything in sight, and yeah, that is that is great. But they do kind of hold some certain things back from from the player. Like, uh, well, as far as I know, because I haven't kind of gotten, I haven't, pl- I have only played a couple of hours of it. But this is just going on what Adam has told me, like. What annoyed me from the get-go was that I couldn't look down the sights, and I know there's an auto-aim, and it's fairly forgiving, but it just, I don't know, it, it feels very awkward at times, because third-person mm. shooters have, have taught me, but since, like, Gears and fucking everything, really, ever since, that you can look down the sights. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? It's yeah. very jarring, that. Yeah. Yeah. It is. I mean, I've not played much of the game. I'm probably only about third mission or so. The intro really put me off. Yes. Yeah, really? Bit... Because I, yeah, I, I thought the intro was, was like a really, st- like, s- very, very strong with like this cover of Firestarter and very, I thought it was very GTA ish. Mm. No, like the actual int- intro trailer. T- when you're on the plane. Bit, that's cool, but on the plane, we got to shoot those three SAM sites. It's like, oh, this isn't very much. Like, I'm not actually doing much. Like, a lot's going on around me mm-hmm. and it's meant to impress me, but it just isn't. Mm-hmm. And then you, you, you parachute off and, well, you fall off, don't you? But then you power, turn into a parachute. And meet that guy, and that that's fine. And then he keeps telling you about how it's all insanity and stuff like this. And it's like, mate, what, you, you try? It's, it tries too hard See, to tell you that you're having fun. The first, the intro to the first one, I still remember it actually because that was brilliant, and it was a lot. It was similar, but it was just, it wasn't as uh, scripted. If you get me, so the first one, you literally you're in a plane coming to this island, and you just jump out, and you're miles away from the beach. And you've just got a parachute, or you know, skydive, and then parachute onto the beach. You meet a fella, then you kill people who are after you. You escape in a van, and you've got to blow a helicopter up. It's basically the intro, and it, and it's they're very similar. You come in on a plane, you got to kill people who are after you, but it just feels a little more. It feels like a tutorial. The intro to this one, if you get me, where it feels specifically designed to teach you how to do shit, which you probably need to do with the grapple hook and the wingsuit and all that type of stuff. But in the first one, it felt just like a natural opening to this mad world. So I do agree with you a bit, Dan. I was a little put off. I, but as you said about how the GTA comparison you made earlier on, yeah. there's times that it... Uh, again, it's, it's a try hard, isn't it? But it tries to, like... It goes from this guy going... He's in the middle of a rebellion for, like, civil war. Mm-hmm. He's fighting for the rebels, for his home country's freedom. And I know it's not meant to be serious, and if it played it that way, that's fine. But he keeps going, oh, this is mad, this is crazy, this is insane... Uh, how much fun and then there'll be moments where it's like really just suddenly like sober and it's like wait what why what's going on here why Mm. why even have that in it because no one's getting that kind of message across in this game it's not happening um and and, i don't know just a few bits really annoyed me like that like there's a bit early on we get a minigun um i think on the second mission you're top of a tower that's the one Mm. i was on about yeah 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 did you notice that the tower had no other way to get to the top of that other than unless you had a grapple gun that only you have? I didn't, Nils. Good yeah, spot. There's, there's no stairs. There's no ladder. There's no nothing. And hmm. it's like just little bits like that. It's like, oh, this isn't a cohesive it's, world. Yeah, that sounds I agree stupid. with you. No, you but are then, right you know, the very next mission, you go and you get the tether thing for the grapple gun yeah. mm-hmm. where you can hook two objects together, press oh. the button and pull them together. I did one of them and sent a giant gas... A cylinder ball thing yeah, oh, falling amazing, off no. a cliff yeah. and I was like oh that was amazing like it, I don't know it's got moments like that it's like oh, that's really cool and then other bits that's like See, oh why are you yeah I'm like know. I've done the first few missions and after that I've just fucked off from the main campaign and just 
done it because there's not exactly a shortage of guns or weapons out there. You can find them and then you're fine. You can wreak havoc as much as you want because they give you practically everything you need in the opening, like free missions. And I just went off and just see what the shock could cause and he cause. And then um, so I just went around liberating the towns. I think the towns get quite boring because it's Jesus. They do. You get to the point where you've got one fucking speaker left and you can't oh, fucking find it. You and you're see, circling I, I, for ages. Yeah, I've just come to the first one where I think it's a mission and it gets you to do that. And yeah. I'm like, oh, really? And each town, am I going to have to be doing this? I'm a bit yeah. sad that that is actually what happened. Because you the see, town, the, the, the thing is, uh, like, the, yeah, the, the towns themselves are fucking really big. But the fucking... So, oh, so sorry, I, I, and you're... You're told in your map, it's called a comms link, I think, in the game. <laughs> and it's like you have two speakers to destroy, two billboards, um, fucking four fuel tanks or whatever. It'll tell you how much you need to, uh, how much you need to actually destroy. And it'll, like, if you, like, it'll, and it'll also kind of keep you updated as to, right, I've one of them left and two of those left and blah, blah, blah. But it won't tell you where they are. Yeah. And oh, I no. look, I don't, I don't want you to hold my hand. But at the same time, when the towns are the towns are this fucking massive. There's no massive, clues to where they are either. You have to literally just circle it like a fucking vulture looking for them, don't you? And it, yeah, it gets boring. It kind of it, it it goes from this frantic, kind of fun, explosive action movie to just like. You're fucking in your parachute, floating around the top of the the roofs, and just looking around. That's exactly what happened to me in that first one as well. Looking mm. around for a yep. speaker and couldn't find the bastard. Yeah. The military bases are a lot better though, because because it, it's all it's weird. Because it, it's just like a army area. There's always people to fight, which can get a bit annoying. But there's yeah. so much explosives everywhere, so you're always just blowing shit up, and it's so. Do you, like, like I said earlier, the explosions are fucking ace. You can almost feel the heat off them because it's that intense. And then when you get like the big ball rolling into a load of people and just fucking killing yeah. them all, it's amazing. What? It's w- but my favourite bits of it, I can just spend ages just fucking floating about on the parachute of like the beautiful vistas and stuff. And I really like the traversal of it. Once you get the hang of the, the grapple hook parachute and wingsuit combo, it's really nice to just move throughout the world because fucking driving is not fun in the slightest. Oh, unless you're like... Drive off a hill, get her in a parachute, and that's about yeah. it. But it, how long? How long did it take you to get used to that? I'd like s- wait, wait, wings or grapple parachute wingsuit kind of combination? Because I'm probably still not completely, but I'm getting the hang of it. What you need to realize as well, if I didn't first start, is that you can, when you've got your parachute and you grapple something whilst on your parachute, you, it doesn't take you to the wall with your, on your parachute. Yeah, It'll, yeah, yeah. like, propel you onwards for momentum and stuff. So once you get the hang of that, and then just to getting up stuff, just the combination of grapple, parachute, um, wingsuit, parachute again, it, it clicks, I'd say, about three or four hours, maybe. That's when I got it, I think, like, to a T, I'd say. Yeah. But it's good. I, I, I don't know. I enjoy Neil, that. What, what, I don't know, Neil. What did you think of the... That well, to be honest, the the obviously because I played the second one quite a bit, I kind of knew how to do the grapple and the parachute. That hasn't really changed, right? Um, so you get the hang of it, and it's it's cool. It can be a bit wearing if it, you know you need to cover long distances, and like Dan says, the driving isn't particularly great. Oh it's shit! I've it's fucking shit. Used, but then the wingsuit. I don't almost get the point of it, it yet. It builds your momentum up, and then. So you can, if you float in softly down, you can get your parachute, you can get your wingsuit out, go like really close to the ground, float back up, and you're going again, and it gets momentum. It feels really nice to do actually. Oh uh, right, okay. I was gonna say, how often are you that high that? You oh, need to a use lot. The wingsuit. Because the oh, right, fucking, because okay. what I love about the game is like its physics are so fucking unrealistic. Like you just get propelled into the air from a gap of like a run up of two meters, and you just fly in again. It's amazing, and I love how. Because like the game, the point of the game is to blow shit up. You probably want, as long as it's not catastrophic, you won't die if you blow if you're next to something when you blow it up, and it'll like you can drop from a massive height, still live on if you've got a full health bar and stuff like that. I like how they're a bit re- like it's fun and it's meant to be fun. Don't make me die because I accidentally blew something up next yeah. to me when you're yeah, pointing the game. They are they are quite clever like that mm. where yeah, if you blow something up that's big, you mm. probably are going to be okay. Well, so you what I'm playing it's, it's incredibly forgiving. <laughs> Yeah, de- and de- it's piss, de- it's, piss, it's, piss, it, it? it's a very rare punishment. Mm, but the punishment's the lot in times, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, very true. Fucking the hell, bad. very true. And I don't, I don't think the run, the a game ridiculous amount of loading time. I don't think it runs that bad on PS4. I think it's 
the frame rate's obviously not that good and it's a bit choppy at times. I think it runs for even it's surprisingly well it, when loads of explosions are going off as well. As long as you're like not moving and just looking at them, it's it runs surprisingly well. So I don't know what it's Got, like on other yeah, places. I, but well, I was gonna say on the on the Xbox One, the frame rate's quite choppy mm. and the load times are yeah. awful. Yeah, I know Adams played it on. He reviewed it on PC and he I don't think he noticed the frame rate issues. I think it runs at like a smooth thirty FPS. Mm-hmm. Uh, like constantly you said but yeah it is a bit it, it drops especially at busy times on console quite a lot which of course when you've got lots of explosion stuff going off is quite often mm. tell you what i'm playing it as though i'm playing it as like my new pez game where i turn the volume down watch telly at the same time <laughs> and just go about killing for because you don't need to know what's happening really just go around blowing shit up without actually hearing it and it's just i like the feeling the motion of like just traversing the world and stuff like that so i, I mean i mean i must say i'm enjoying it but and I think the world is very pretty, and they nailed the, the aesthetic of like a lazy Mediterranean town. But it's not, you know. It's just I think it's like a solid seven out of ten. It's not a world beater, but it's just a nice middle tier type of game. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm never gonna finish it, but I no, will play more. Just in like bursts of like fifteen twenty minutes, blow some stuff up, kind of relax in mm-hmm. this colourful world. It does look quite nice. Yeah, I think it does. Uh, the island of Medici, but uh, yeah, yeah. Any any closing thoughts, Colin? Anything else to say? Not, not particularly. Like in terms of how it looks, I think it looks quite pretty at times, but it's it's nowhere near. I I think in a way, nowhere near what we saw in the trailers. I thought the trailers really. I don't mm, know. I painted this true. fucking an incredible picture of what Just Cause Three was. It's again. I mean, it's 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 good it's good it's like and i'd imagine if i played a bit more of it i i would definitely enjoy it but there are certain things like the the liberating the military bases and the little towns are just they do kind of get a bit repetitive and um i, I don't know I'm, I'm not there's a hell of a lot of them as well because there is my copy came with a map that showed all the different locations of towns and stuff in in on the world and there's fucking loads of them like it, so it's a many. very very large game but that's in nowadays dan naylor get very very large games are in and i'm kind of fucking falling out with them i won't i agree I, with I won't you. Lie to you yeah yeah that was that was so smooth oh, God. <laughs> i wish i was you uh I, i've been playing more with fallout 4 and i must admit i'm not I'm not. I'm not a fan. It seems Why? like the longer this game's out, the further we go away from release, the more people are just like done with it and aren't to find out that's not actually that uh, all that. It was weird. I was playing it uh, last week and I, I put more hours into it than I realised I had. But I'd, um, I was just not really exploring. But I went to to find a wee town and uh, and it, it. Oh well, I got told to go find this settlement. It was like two people in a hut. But oh, yeah. you know, never mind. Um, and then I decided to wander off and. Yeah, I, I, I realised that I was on, like, I, I saw something, I saw, like, a hi- abandoned, collapsed bit of highway in the distance. I was like, oh, I'll go, I'll go check that out. And it was only when I climbed to the top, because I knew I'd, I'd find a settlement or camp, a bandit camp at the top of that, because that's what Fallout games have at mm. the top of highway, collapsed highway passes. And that's what I found. And I was like, oh, okay, and I'm playing a bit more, going through the city, and oh, there's going to be traps here, and then ghouls, and yep, yeah, I was exactly right again. It's like okay this is this is the same game and i realized that i i wasn't even really thinking that i was playing a new fallout do do, do you know what i mean that sounds weird i was just playing this could be fallout 3 and i don't know if i'd notice the difference is is, is there i I, I don't know is there is is that a bad thing or like has it been long enough that it's nice to go back into the world of fallout and the vasts and i don't know like i don't think it's been long enough but you, do you know what i i'm not entirely sure i i think it was done I, there wasn't much more they could do with it i feel like okay. new vegas took it in a different direction for fallout 3 where it went more comedy more here's a town that actually survived so it's not been too hit by the nuclear waste it's the world you know it's like a nuclear waste world without all the nuclear apocalypse stuff if that makes sense right okay and that was a bit more bright, a bit more colourful. And what I've seen so far of this, while it looks prettier and is more <clears> colourful, <throat> it isn't like a brighter, more vibrant world. Yeah, you spoke still... of uncohesive words with just Cars 3, and Fallout 4 is very much the same. There's like just shit everywhere. It's like, why has no cunt cleaned this place up? It's been 200 years. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like, oh, here's a toolkit with like all the tools still in it, like in the remains of a van that's got a water bottle. Yeah, and like, why are the. years, no one's taken this. Yeah, why no. is there like still fucking mutants? two yards away from a massive city when you have guards that are just the kill them 
you're fucking threats to your community. Kill them. Doesn't make yeah, sense. Yeah, just wandering the wilderness. I never, I, I haven't, and I spent quite a while wandering mm. it. I've not come across anything interesting yet. Ah, just on what, my do, own. what do you mean? So I well, disagree I, I, there. I've not re- maybe I've been wandering in circles, going the wrong way. To be fair, but I've not found anything that I, I've come across. Maybe a, a bandit camp or something like that. But there's mm. been no story behind it. No quests S- to pick up. See, no. Have you been to the? Oh, it's near the motorway bridge. They say that it's like an army. It's like I think it's called a food, like cache place. No. It's near. The, you need to go. Have you done the brewery mission with Nick? No. Um, not with no. yeah, with Nick Valentine. Right, do the the brewery mission, and then I think it's the it's in the brewery. I don't know if it's with Nick or not though. I'm pretty sure it is. And then do the that going to that place where I just told you about. It's that has a, like a good story behind it. I think I've told fair, you about it before. Fair enough. I, I I just I don't know. I just don't. Oh yeah, you said there were two warring factions. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, like I don't know. It's just like it's. The, me- the missions so far have been go to a place and kill some bad guys and that's it and I know I don't know I've almost I think I've come to expect more from like open world games like The Witcher or something to mm-hmm. have a bit more depth to their story or something right. like that no I do and agree with just you. doesn't and I don't know it just I've just I'm just not enjoying it that much and it is just more Fallout and there's not enough changes almost to justify it is more that's the thing it's not like changed dramatically and the one change they have done with the vats where it slows time rather than stops it mm-hmm. i really dislike oh really yeah because some like fucking mole rats they're so quick like it doesn't really if someone's fighting you it's just too confusing if they're attacking you and you're trying to swap between targets and actually work out where they are because someone's at your feet and you want to kind of you can't back off from it if it's a little rat but it's quite hard to hit on its own so use vats to kind of pull it up but of course it'll pull up the rat that you're like facing so then you need to flick down to the one that's attacking you and then pick the bit and by that point it's already attacked you twice before you've even selected a target and it i don't know it just gets a bit messy i found but maybe that's just me hmm I, I, I'm I am feeling the same as you with Fallout 4. I've just I've not even picked it up for a while since there's been so much shite coming out recently. But I agree with Colin. There's just too many open fucking world games these days. Can't complete any. Like Witch is the only like massive game I completed this year, and I played Metal Gear, Fallout, Batman. I only didn't finish Batman because it was shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, just Cause, Mad Max, fucking all of them, apart from Assassin's Creed. I just can't get, just can't get through any of them because there's so I, fucking, there's no time. Yeah, there is no time. There is no time. The volume of of big games has just been astronomical this year. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of volume. <laughs> yeah. That, go on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> this is you. I was waiting for you to approve my fucking segue. All right. All right. <laughs> but he did the. Colin did the vault. The segue. <laughs> I didn't know he did deliberately. Let, right. Let, it, let him take credit for it, Dan. Let him take credit for it. All right. Watch volume. You're a bigger man than no, I. No, I didn't watch volume. I've been playing volume. It's on sale. There's a good PSN sale at the minute. Actually. There's loads of decent indie games for a lot of money off. I was gonna. I was... Is, is this the, the Twelve Days of Christmas? No, no. Or... That's like that's like like proper AAA game. I think you can get Pez for half with price not much money on. Oh. Really? Yeah, yeah. Fucking hell. And it was a uh, Uncharted collection last week. I mean, two days ago, sorry. And um, no, it's just like a normal sale that they do every week or something, and it's like an indie sale, and this one's quite good. There's loads of decent games I wanted to get. I was torn between the swindle and volume, and upon letting upon upon Adam telling me that I'd be shit at swindle, I got the volume instead. It's and nice. um, Yeah, well, he knows. It's, um, I think, got it half price, so it was like £7 on instead of 15 or whatever, so it's pretty good. And it's um, the second game from Thomas Was Alone Maker, uh, Mike Biffle, and it's basically a stealth game in it it's like a I pursue I think it's like what Metal Gear Solid used to be like from what I hear and it's quite good it's really kind of yeah I've only played the first few missions so far because again I have no time to do anything these fucking days but um which is surprising considering my current vocation but um it's really tense I like how you're trying to sneak the missions the the maps I've had to like navigate so far have been quite simple but they've been very tense when you've like someone sees you, you need to run away and stuff like that and hiding past these guards and stuff it's quite interesting but i'm a bit torn on the voice acting like you got thomas was alone was like famed for is it danny wallace i think who did the voice acting yeah. for that yeah and yeah. he's really good in it but i'm pretty sure there's so it's danny wallace who does like uh it's called alan which is like a 
like a training program or something and if i can just google it so apologies for the typing if you can hear it it's um, it's a, a youtuber does yeah. the um the voice of the main character. character yes and it's noticeably 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 not as bad and yeah robert not as good as... wait shut yeah charlie mcdonald now i'm sure he's like all right his youtube job but as a voice actor for games it just it's very jarring it just doesn't seem like i don't know what it is it's because it's weird because it's like the quality of it as in objectively the quality of the sound is fine but it's just like it just seems very disconnected from the rest of it he seems like he doesn't you know what i mean it's hard to explain but it's just very jarring compared to professional the voice actors they've got so i was a little disappointed with that one i i agree i i mean i played about i don't know maybe the first 20 ish missions of um volume and because I, I think it has a hundred yeah it does sa- same as uh 100 loan. campaign mission levels then. yeah all loads of editing stuff and i i just like yeah well, i suppose i found his voice just really jarring um not just let's call it a fucking spade a small shovel just bad uh to mm. be honest and also <sighs> It's is a spade a small shovel? <laughs> to write it is. But listen, Murph. Isn't that a trowel? It's fucking... It's so easy. It's, yeah, it's, I was it's thinking that. It's fucking criminally easy. Mm. Like, the, the checkpointing system is an absolute farce. Now, I played it... That when bad? It, when it was just... Out. Yeah, yeah. But, well, it, it, see, it's, it's bad in that it's way too forgiving. Right. So, so it, it makes... It, like this is meant to be a stealth game where you're meant to be carefully like just walking around the place trying not to be seen but you can do the whole kind of like careful 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 shit I've just been seen but the checkpoint is right there so now I'm at the checkpoint they kill me it's grand because I'll be at this checkpoint and whatever mm. I collected uh, before I died I'll have so it's fine I found hiding from when you've just been seen was quite easy as well that like you could hide behind a wall and they like forget you were there yeah, so, I, 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 I don't know. I like. Do you, do you see yourself playing more of it, Mark? Yeah, I'm definitely gonna. Once I've got like, which I will have, I'll have more time. Hopefully this weekend, because I finally done my fucking work. I've been talking about it for the past like two months, but I'll have more time. So I'm definitely gonna try and put some more time into that. But when it's in, bet- when I've got still got Fallout Four, Just Cause, Pez, and multiple other things to play, I'd, it'll probably fall down the pecking order. But I have paid seven pound for it, so I'm definitely gonna give at least give it at least another go. Oh, you can tell you're a student. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nickel and timing, every little thing. So it's uh, you tell me. It's got to be done, man. Come here, I'm just looking here. Let Apparently, if I'm reading this correctly, uh, Jackbox is included in the uh, PlayStation sale thing. Right. I think. D- Nails, I thought you'd be screaming this from the rooftops, no? Uh, I, I didn't know. I... I, I, I I suppose I can why would you? You it own it from the rooftops if you want. You, you already own it, so I suppose yeah. Why why would you care? I suppose really. Yeah, and, and to be honest, if I look at it on the store, it just tells me it's already I've already purchased it, so I don't even know if it shows me the price. It's fair. Yeah, very fair <laughs> point. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, if it's is it the first one? Is it the second one? Is it? Uh, I think both? I think it's the second one. Hang on. Uh, you, it's definitely worth. Uh, if a pun, if uh, the first one I think I gave a ten, the second one I gave an eight, and in retrospect I think I should have scored the second one higher. So uh, oh really? Yeah, yeah. Playing it more, um, the games are actually cause it's got fibbage in it, which is like the best game. Just where you lie, you got you, you come up with a phrase, you've got to come up with a convincing answer, and you you all vote on it and stuff. Um, oh with no, the true it's, answer it's there all, as well. I think, I think it's only on sale in America, bastards. Oh, that's a shame. It, it's it, definitely it, been on sale recently. I've seen yeah. it on sale recently. But I think it's a physical copy of it's out now as well, so you probably pick it up quite cheap. It's a great party game, especially in time for Christmas, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah think about cause, you because everyone you just like you just need one copy and then you sign in with your tablets or phones or whatever you've got. Um, well, really, just those two things. But. Uh, <laughs> And you just play along and just type on that or draw pictures or whatever. It comes up on the screen. It's all very slick. Looks lovely. And you can play it with literally everyone. Um, yeah, including a night that I played it with my parents that I, I'm never going to forget. Um, Come on, explain. You can't uh, leave us like that. Well, my parents aren't uptight. I think that's the wrong word. But, you know, I'd never really sworn in front of them. or um, Really? Uh, not massively, no. No, okay. I was always... I quite- do. I don't swear much in my normal life. 
Um, <laughs> and Swearing's fun. Yeah, so I didn't. I never really did that. But by the end, or by half one in the morning, when we're all super pissed the other weekend, I think I'd given the answer semen mayonnaise for Quiplash. Uh, Lovely. Lovely. Yeah. Ooh. So uh, that kind of sets the tone for how, yeah. Mm. You can never look pa- do your parents, parents do any filthy answers? Yeah, never. Their Christmas is cancelled. And uh, <laughs> give us an example of your parents' filthy answers. Uh, no, I don't think they were as bad. To be oh, fair, right. but they so were you... laughing along and you know actually voting for my answers as well. Which, oh really? Yeah, that's the thing. Like they were. Yeah, yeah. We were we were very very drunk. So yeah, oh. I mean you can literally play this with your parents and have as much fun as you can <clears> playing with your mates who are absolutely vulgar. If you've ever watched the God is Geek crew playing it or played along with us, in fact, while we've done Twitch streams of it, uh, you'll know that things tend to get dirty pretty damn fast. <laughs> yeah. That is when it's at its best. I mean, you, you can play it with any all ages. There is a family-friendly mode, but yeah, it is at its is best. Is there really when... a family-friendly mode? Uh, the second game has it, and... Yeah, I think it's the first might as well, and it, and it's yeah. only for certain games. But yeah, because because one of the default, I remember when we were playing um, along on uh, on online, it was our first Twitch one of uh, Jackbox Two. We were playing Earwax, where you have to pick two sound effects, and uh, they kind of play one after the other to describe a certain theme, and 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 one person's the judge, and they pick. And we got um, it was uh, one of the players' idea of oh what no the idea of a four player something like that and another one is like the noise x player makes while they're orgasming or something like that so you do a donkey and a glass breaking or something like that right um of course that's the kind of thing you some some families may not want um especially when the players are named what as a well. boring family <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and and on uh, before we before we continue i think it's time for a short ad break um so if you just listen to this message and we'll be back with you in just a second the In Retrospect Show is a monthly podcast about video games, how they're made, how they inspire, and how they play. Every 30 days, we share with you a game you can get completely free of charge. We discuss what we think about it, and we even bring you inside insight on how it came to exist. Plus, there are special feature segments and the kind of chit chat you can only get from a group of gamers who have known each other for far, Far too long. Far too long. The In Retrospect too Show. Long. Get it on InRetrospectPodcast.com, iTunes, Stitcher, and YouTube. The This Is Xbox podcast is a fortnightly show focused on Xbox gaming. Join myself, Greg Giddens. Together we will take over the world, except for by together I mean you'll do all the work and I'll just sit on my throne. And my co-host, Neil Jarrett. It may sound perverse, dark and actually sick, but I can see exactly what you're saying about Greg. I can see right into your mind. As we talk Xbox games and Xbox news, interview guests and tease our fortnightly challenge video amongst lively banter and awful, awful jokes. You can find the This Is Xbox podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and the This Is Xbox website. And we're back. Thanks for that message from our sponsor. And uh, yeah, lads, uh, have you been playing anything else, either of you? Or have you just been watching TV as you normally have? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's kind of what I've TV's been doing. taken over because it's just easier and more, and more contained. As well. it's very yeah, there is that. T- TV is fucking great. Really Come on, is- Alan. Daredevil. Uh, Are you want Jessica Jones yet before you talk about Daredevil? I, yes, I have. Let's I talk have about Jessica Jones. Started, I've watched the first episode of Jessica Jones, so it's very oh, difficult for me. Oh, you've not to... seen her yet. Oh, you've not seen him yet properly, then, I mean. You've not um, seen The Killgrave. Yeah, that is that. that's oh. Tenant, is it? It is. Oh, yeah, man, you're going to love it. Next week, make sure you've watched by, so at least about episode six, I think, because I cannot wait. You're going to love it. And then apparently come on the podcast so you can talk <laughs> about it. <laughs> um, I can't next week, and I'll tell you why in the Patreon bit. Because, oh, yeah. yeah, of course. Um, but I, yeah, oh, there's a teaser. What's Colm doing <laughs> next <laughs> next week that he can't be on the podcast? You have to tell us next segment. Yeah. So how are you finding Daredevil? Then? Okay. Yep. Uh, Daredevil, <laughs> I fin- I finished. It's excellent. Oh mm-hmm. Jesus, it's so good. Wilson yeah, Fisk is, is yeah. outstanding, and I really like. Because, I mean, Daredevil's a funny superhero. I mean, he's blind, right? Mm-hmm. But he can do what he's... <laughs> but his power is... He's blind, like, but his power is that he can see. Yeah, effectively, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but it kind of... I don't know. It, it kind of works, sort yeah, of. It does. You know, it makes like sense. He, he's very good at playing a blind person, actually. Like yeah, for Charlie Cox. The, oh, he's brilliant, Charlie Cox. As as when he's... What's, what's his name? Something Murdoch, isn't it? Um, oh, Matthew. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I re- yeah, I really like him. I really like Foggy as well. I think he's excellent mm. as the kind of you know the comedy foil um, yeah. uh, partner. The the blonde girl who Kevin. What's her name? Kevin Page. Okay. You know about the one. The one the, who's, the who's yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah that's Kevin. E- excellent. Um, it's just a really well told story. Do you know, mm. like I, the fucking the flashbacks as well work exceptionally well. Yeah. I love how much like attention they pay on Fisk and how he's like just like he's the be- as they always say the best villains are the heroes of their own story and he very much is the hero of his isn't he? Oh yeah, yeah. He he truly believes in in what he's doing and he's trying to make Hell's Kitchen a better place in his own warped, twisted way. And yeah, I mean, spo- no more spoilers and stuff. But he mm-hmm. because like see, I I always envision Kingpin. I suppose growing up in the cartoon, I always remember Kingpin as a Spider-Man kind of foe. I don't, oh, yeah. I don't really have... I didn't really even... To be honest with you, I didn't even know he was in the Daredevil kind of mythos as well. But it's just excellent. It really, really is. It can, fucking, it can get really like dark as well and really like you know vicious mm. in terms of um, yeah. the violence involved. But oh, it's, it's d- excellent. And you'll I'm, like... If you like what? the darkness, you'll like Jessica Jones a lot more because my days, that is so... That's like, whereas um, Daredevil's like, the main focus is like the pulsating action and the like the yeah. one in episode two, which is fucking fantastic. Jessica Jones is a lot more darker and like a psychological horror type stuff and it's just fucking really good. I, I, I think they're both... I think Daredevil probably objectively just a little bit better, but mm. I think I personally prefer Jessica Jones because of the themes of it and Kilgrave and stuff like that. What's what's man in the high castle like? Because I've only well, I've I'll only st- seen images. I've only seen the, well, the advertising kind of billboards and stuff of the Statue of Liberty <clears throat> being covered yeah. in like Nazi paraphernalia and stuff. And it's I don't know, like that, good. that image is fa- is fantastic. And yeah, I yeah. want to know what it's like. Well, right, shout out to Hannah who recommended it to me because she's a cunt who always moans that I never recommend, uh, never give her shout outs for stuff. Yeah, so I'll get that. Is, out is, there is now. Hannah a regular listener? Uh, probably not. She doesn't even know how I do this. I'd imagine. But so hey, how <laughs> does she even know who you well, are? Oh, she. D- yeah. Do you want? Do you want to open up about your feelings? I do. You, a, you're treading on a dark path. Sisters across from you and lads. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Ooh, Ooh, find dang out more in our next segment. You're treading on unknown paths here. You're not denying it. Because it happened. Cough. Fucking two years ago, mate. Drams. <laughs> Oh, and find out more in the next segment. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> but probably not. Probably anyway, not, no. She recommended me, right. And I'd see it because I'd just, because I mean, I'm a student, get six month Amazon Prime for free. So I was tempted. I'd seen the advert and I was like, oh, that looks interesting. I was, because te- there's fucking some great programs on Amazon Prime. Watch Vikings and Black Sails because they're both fucking ace. So I was tempted to watch, I was tempted to get it just for them. And then I saw this man in the high castle. And obviously, as you say, the. Poster is quite striking of its, you know, the Statue of Liberty with a big fucking swastika on it. Mm-hmm. But it's really, really, really good. I watched it. I think I've watched it all in a week, which isn't quite the same level I watched Jessica Jones in, but still pretty good. It's still um, pretty impressive, yeah. Yeah, it's ten episodes, hour long each, and it's how do I explain this? Right? It's the alternative reality, and basically Germany builds the bomb first, and it's only mentioned in passing. This they get the bomb first, and they nuke Washington. And then they win. And then Japan wins again. And so America is cut in half between Germany, Nazi, the Nazi Empire and the Japanese Empire. The Germany gets, as you'd expect, the East Coast, so New York and all that. Uh, Japan gets the West, never, West Coast, so San Francisco. And they're the two cities where it's mainly set in. And then there's a neutral zone in the middle, which I don't really know why it's a neutral zone. It's never explained. But it's a place where no, there's no law whatsoever. Okay. So, that's, so that's where people go for to get away from either regime. And it's basically this premise is this girl's sister comes up to her. She's not seen it for years and she gives her this film and then this sister is leaves the show, shall we say. And then this film shows a history where they won the war. And so it's all really weird and she has to then do what her sister was going to do, get this film to the resistance because she thinks it's the hope that they didn't lose the war, that this is weird mind thing and they might change history or whatever. 
and apart and then it's just just that's the main premise and oh, the the resistance and Nazis and the, the Japan and all this type of stuff. It's really really good, and I know I've probably not given it the best pitch, but. Are, it's are, really are unsettling. Germany, are, are Germany and Japan baddies still in this? See, see, because it, it's, it's set in the sixties, so it's twenty. So it's just below twenty years before the war. After the war ended, I think the war ended, and then there is then America was like they got control of America in like nineteen forty nine. I think it was after like fighting there. Um, so it's like it's weird because it's in the future, so it's normal now. Nazis and Japanese thinking isn't a normal thing. So you start. So it's normal, and so you start having sympathy for people who are Nazis and stuff like that, for the characters who are Nazis and mm-hmm. like the Japanese Empire, and there's a me- there's some certain members of the because ri- Hitler's still about, Hitler's still going, Is and he? there's people, yeah, yeah, he's Hitler's good. still about, yeah, he's still knocking on, he's out, he's out now, and he's shaking a bit, but he's still going, and there's like plans to kill him and all this type of shit and all that type of stuff, and um, and overthrow and start a war, but for Nazis, start a war with Japan. Because they've not got nukes, and then take over it all. So that's like the story plot from like a um, the high up perspective, and it's just really good. It's really unsettling because normal, just the Nazi regime is just normal. There's a bit in the first episode when there's a guy driving, and he's talking to a policeman, and it starts snowing, and the guy goes, "What's this?" And the policeman just goes, "Oh, it's the hospital. They're burning all the old and disabled." Just as nonchalant as that, and it's just really, really unsettling and creepy, and how things that are so alien are just so normal in this world and stuff like that and it's just really fucking interesting I'd, it's, it's bleak as fuck as well like there's not one like positive reply for out mm. so i definitely recommend watching it it's really really good mm. speaking of Sounds hitler <laughs> i'm intrigued where you're going here have you guys seen kung fury by fuck i have good god no i watched that for the first time the other week and i've only just remembered Oh, it's quite good, isn't it? It's what, what the balls is Kung Fury. It's is it about half an hour long? It's a half an hour long. It it actually it one was thing. A, it was a Kickstarter. It was a Kickstarter for okay. a film, um, and it's about half an hour long. It's on Netflix, right? And it's this retired. It, I'm going to say retired cop, but that's not what he is in any way. It's this guy called Kung Fury. He's like a like karate master, basically. Yeah. But okay. it's it's I'm like it now. filmed it modern day. Well, it's not film, it's a modern film, but it's made to look like a retro eighties oh, stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah. My imagine days. Far Cry. Is it Blood yeah, Dragon? Blood Dragon. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. on it now. Imagine that see. in like a kind of a cop film in New York. I can in see the eighties, and just, you've got that. I just remember the dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, the dinosaur. Yeah, and it's basically this guy. He he he. Like Sarah Car. <laughs> is that what he's called? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen. I was just about to say there's a triceratops in a fucking yeah. police uniform, like, and, and he can talk for no apparent reason. He's just he's just there in the office, right, I'm watching this and time. this like this get arcade machine cabinet. He starts this arcade cabinet machine coming to life and just like going a rampage in New York. So he fights that, and then he notices that it was made in like Nazi Germany. <laughs> <laughs> or, or something like that. It's like made in Germany in 1939 or something. Yeah, okay. So, and then, but then Hitler, it, so Hitler teleports into New York and it's like on a rampage in the Monday. So he decides to go to like back in time to kill Hitler before he can tell he, he Hitler can travel time in forward in time to then, if that makes sense. <laughs> See, there's some interesting because there's some interesting parallels between this and the man in the high castle. Then. Well, I know that's what that's what made me remember. It's the tone couldn't be more different, and yeah, uh, it, it's it just cool. like he goes back in time, but he goes too far, and then he meets some like cave women on their dinosaurs yep. with their like it electric like guns. Fred and, and then... Bill's mad adventure thing, whatever that was called, I can't remember. Do you know what I'm on about? No. Oh, oh, you mustn't. Fred and Tom. What's he called? Bill and Tom's Bill and mad Bill. adventure. <laughs> Bill and Ted. Bill and Ted. Bill and Ted. Oh, I see. <laughs> Fred and, and Tom. Tom. <laughs> Bill and Ted's excellent invention. Not Bill and. What did I say? What name did I say? Fred and Tom. Fred and Tom's mad adventure. That not... was the really low budget straight to VHS <laughs> sequel. Yeah. Oh. Um, but but yeah, yeah, oh, Kung you Kung have Kung to watch Kung Fury. Fury. It's on my list. I'm gonna watch it like by next week. I'll watch it after this. Just it's go, a half an hour. I've got a watch it now party. and join us for the him. end of the Patreon back a bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do, a, do a director's commentary for the Patreon. Oh, live oh, watch. God. That could be next week. Extended bit. I could watch it live while we're doing it and we just record my reaction. We could all watch it at the same time. Yes. That's happening. Oh, we can all do it now. Do I do it for the extended bit or watch it at the same time? 
Can we? We, we should Can we do that? We should probably plan these things, aren't we? <laughs> right, we're doing it. We're doing I it. I mean, I've got a TV right in front of me with Netflix I've got a computer. On. Let's I, do it. No, let's not. Let's not. No, no we'll, we'll do, do it. it. Come we'll on. plan this. We'll see if we can do this for an episode in the future. Oh, why can't we do it? We funny. can do this. Watch it on your computer with your headphones in so the sound won't get picked up and we'll watch it. No, oh, no, no. On. It's a thing you need to experience properly. But watch it and we'll talk about it next week. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm still... I'm still clamoring for the live watch next week and next week, sir. Well, we'll talk about it after, off cast and we'll see if we can plan this. But yeah, it's absolutely mental. Ends like a kung fu fight with just Hitler and loads of Nazis at the end. Uh, and Nazi there's, a di- there's dinosaurs, there's robot guns. <laughs> Triceracop. <laughs> Uh, oh, amazing. it's actually it's, it's uh, it, you don't even need Netflix. It's actually on uh, YouTube. The whole oh, thing. is it just on YouTube? Yeah, the whole thing is on oh, YouTube. Oh God! Right, I'm going to include a link to it in the uh, in the in the notes <laughs> so that people can just go and watch it, and <laughs> then they can experience the. Oh, if you're listening to and this. as well, uh, fucking Hasselhoff's song for this is brilliant. Hasselhoff's in it. Oh, no, Hasselhoff. no, he's not, he he's, he has a um, the 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 official song. Right, okay. It's fucking. Oh, uh, I just watched the first couple of seconds. I've forgotten yeah. that. <laughs> all right, no, all right, you go spoil it for me. Stop. All right, I okay, want to watch okay. this. Okay. I can't okay. wait. Uh, no, but see, now I've clicked it, and now I want to watch the live watch. Live watch. Live watch. Laser live unicorns. Watch. Live watch. Live. <laughs> right, this probably isn't too good for the the listener. No, sorry, this isn't great for the listeners. And it's got uh, yeah, it's 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 like the guy who kickstarted. It's like the main character, but he's trying to fund. He's, I think he's done a second Kickstarter to try and get it for a full, fully fledged feature film now. Oh really? Where? Yeah, he wants a f- link me. He wants a full. Ver- <laughs> he's, yeah, I think he's trying to do a full version of it. Last I heard. Um, ah. But yeah, check it out. It's an absolutely kick-ass film. Uh, yeah, that's just awesome. I don't know what we talk about now. I don't know oh. where you go from there. PlayStation Experience. Uh, do we talk about that now? Or do we save that? Oh. I don't know. Well, Let's talk, talk about, about now. For the next Guys, uh, Final Fantasy. Seven's getting a remake. I don't know if you've heard. It was they they, they announced it quietly a while back. That, no, um, and uh, uh, you know it's it's a remake. So it's got prettier graphics and stuff. But they've also uh, got. I, I think the... prettier graphics is underselling it a bit. It's a fucking. I've I've never seen what Final Fantasy Seven oh, looked oh. like before this. And so and it came out on the PS4, didn't it? So I was looking at the screenshots, and there's just how could people fucking love this game? It looks f- right. Uh, yeah, but it came out. Dan, it came out when you were three. Yeah, exactly. I, no, I wasn't born, was I? It came out when did it come uh, out? Sure, oh, you were born. 90, 98. 98, I'd have been two. Fuck yeah, but it might not have even been two. I might have been You weren't even alive for Euro 96, were you? No. You weren't? Jesus. How would he have been... Oh, it was out in 90... Sorry, this was 97. January 31st, 97. Yeah. I would have... Uh, no, I would have been alive for literally fucking a month when it came out. Jesus Christ. That's <laughs> crazy. That is, you're, yeah. You young fuck. So, right. But it just looked fucking weird. So, I, I was like... The, the, the... It's not just a graphical update, is it? They've completely fucking redone it all yeah they? they have but they've also they've changed that it's no longer turn based which was kind of a staple of that, that game and series at one time and it's now kind of a live movement uh, real time is the word I was looking for uh, <laughs> uh, more in line with the more recent Final Fantasies which you know have got great critical acclaim Fantastic, um, yeah. and uh, they've also said it's going to be episodic which is an interesting that twist. That stinks of we've not got enough money to make it, so you best give us a fucking enough money to do it by episode one so you can get the rest of it. Like, there, there's a yeah, there's a couple of kind of things going on here. Yeah, the fact that they've completely redone the battle system to, as you say, Nails, uh, use the the modern day one from, which I think was a Final Fantasy 13? 13. Yeah, 13 yeah, brought in the kind of real-time there. combat system. And also, yeah, the fact that it's episodic. Like I, I, I'm not going to take credit for this, but I would, l- and I would love to give credit to the person who did say this, but I can't remember who it was. I saw someone on Twitter say that it seems right that film, like there are certain quote unquote classics in film that will never be touched, like your Casablancas or your Gone with the Winds, stuff like that, right? And Final Fantasy VII would, I mean, yeah, I wouldn't even hesitate and say it's it's considered a classic, like a really one of the real all-time great video games but there's no like it's like remake of course yeah whatever who, who cares which I, I don't know i like things being just preserved in time if they are that type of 
real, you know, all time great sort of um, an all time great in their medium. And I, yeah, I, 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 don't I mean, know. I was trying to think of like a comparison. It's almost like them taking Crash Bandicoot and they could pretty up the graphics of the original Crash Bandicoot, and that's fine. But then turning it into an open world platformer. Yes. Also, saying no, this is coming from a big Crash Bandicoot fan. Saying Crash Bandicoot is an all time great, but you know. Like, let's be honest. No, about, sorry, no, no, sorry. Sense. I wasn't. I wasn't saying. I meant. But, I wasn't. No, I meant. But, but like I, an, I, icon, an iconic yeah. kind of. That's how this game is. Yeah. Do you know what, yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? I wasn't saying it's maybe. Actually, for me, it's probably one of my favorite games. But. Yeah. It, yeah. That's... I mean, obviously, it's not. You know, Final Fantasy story doesn't even compare to Crash Bandicoot. Obviously. Um, <laughs> mainly because Crash Bandicoot didn't really have one. <laughs> but never mind. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I've never been a Final Fantasy VII fan. I have tried it. Um, but you see, the problem with. The original one, I mean, it came out in 97. That's 18 years ago. Yes. And you can't play an 18-year-old game unless you played it the first time round. So you're not going to pick up the the PS4 one that's just come out then? Because I'm tempted just to compare them. For when the the full one comes out. But you see, I'm not going to get the full one either. Have you played the? Have you played it at all ever? Yeah, the, the, I, just, I just said that. Right, I wasn't listening, but I've never played it, so that's why I'm <laughs> tempted to honest. play it. Well, yeah. <laughs> Could have said the connection dropped out. Could have said anything to spare my feelings, <laughs> oh, really. I, I didn't hear it. But, oh, did I say I wasn't listening? What he, meant, no, he, went, what he meant was he was having a cheeky browser Twitter, but... <laughs> um, uh, yeah, absolutely yeah. not doing that in the slightest. No, maybe, yeah, fair play. The... the uh, I I played it again. Like I mean, there are people on staff who absolutely adore this game. The three of us aren't those people. I fucking hate Final Fantasy. I think they're boring <laughs> bollocks, bullshit. Uh, never liked. So it. we're played, playing then, yeah. I played Final Fantasy VII back in the day. Hated it. Um. So I mean, the fact like none of this is really kind of making me outraged. The fact that it's it's now no are no longer turn based. Or, I don't know, cloud-looking, like, I don't know, kind of some weird... Emo I don't know, just, it just weird. It looks weird. Um, like, none of this is making me outraged. But I can definitely see why people would be like, hang on a second. Final Fantasy VII, which was sold as one game, is now episodic. Like, it is strange. Well, and they've said that each segment's going to be the size of a full game. Now, what do they mean by full game? That's Cause, like, I mean, yeah, what's a, a full game? Open uh, world, isn't it? It's well, be. it's well, it, it's just it's a big. I mean, the original Final Fantasy was a big game. That that's why the Final Fantasies were so big. I think in their day was that there were no other open world games. I know we've just been saying that we're sick of them, but like back then, a game that came on four discs, what wasn't common? Mm. You know, Metal Gear Solid had two. The Final Fantasy had a couple. I think is it seven and eight. Maybe had. Um, like four discs or something yeah, each yeah, yeah. kind of thing but that wasn't common so having a game this big now is it going to be that each disc is going to be an episode is that what it's going to I don't really know because be? again like if how how much how much backtracking was there in the original Final Fantasy 7 like how far would you oh god knows I, I don't know so like like just the point I'm making is like are, are certain areas going to be locked out to you with these episodes oh I see um, do you know what? I don't know how. No, I. I don't know. I, I. I always can't answer. I don't have a clue. I don't have a clue. I do. do yeah. what, what about Nino Cooney? Do you have a clue about that? I've got a bit of a clue about that. I played a few hours, good few hours of the original. Um, I didn't actually finish it. It's a shame, really. Um, I don't know really why I stopped. Um, but yeah, they've announced uh, Nino Cooney two. Oh. The subtitle of which I haven't written down on the dock and can't remember. It's probably some sort of the fairy fucks someone it was in like the face. Divergent or Kingdom or something. The some fairy shit. fucks someone in the face. It's probably some bollocks bullshit subtitle. I didn't even know there was a subtitle. I'm, Nino- I'm looking it up. <laughs> it's it's uh, Dan. I, 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 I what is it? Revenant Kingdom. There you go. You weren't far See. off then. <laughs> it, was, uh, <laughs> it was close, yeah. Um, the first yeah. one was good, wasn't it? I, I quite enjoyed the first one because like, even the random encounters weren't exactly random because you could see what was ahead of you. So if you were like, oh, fuck off, I don't want I don't want to be just like, have yes. the kind of walking yeah. through the grass and just... It's like, no, no, fuck off. I don't want to be bothering myself with this. Um, yeah, oh, definitely. I mean, it, I I really enjoyed the. Uh, I thought the voice acting made it really for the first one. How how well localized it was, because mm-hmm. um, it even changed some of the scenes and the artwork to make it fit in more with the Western audience. Then you had Drippy. Was it, was it Mr. Drippy? Mr. Welsh? Drippy, yeah, yeah. Mr. Drippy, because uh, just Drippy would be 
offensive. <laughs> Mr. Yeah, Trippy was my father. Give him uh, the full title. Right. <laughs> um, it looks fucking beautiful. I'll say, like, I've never played it, and, and I hope they bring the original out to PS4 because I can actually give it a go. But it looks like I know it's Studio Ghibli in it, the art style and stuff like that, and it just looks like something like it's completely unique. In well, the games, a- the actual cutscenes were stu- Studio Ghibli, weren't they? Mm, Which they right. closed, didn't they? Yeah, but it's still the art director doing Nino Kuni too, I believe. Oh, good, good. Um, yeah, I mean, it looked. It. I'm sure it'll be fun. I'm sure if you like the first one, you'll love it. If you hate the first one, this is probably not going to sway you. Mm. Um, but let's let's move on from JRPGs uh, to something a bit more westernized. Mm-hmm. Um, and by a bit more westernized, I mean basically, you know, Donald white Trump. man. Uh, wow! You know when you know when you said before when you said um, speaking of Hitler, I genuinely thought that's where he was going to go. I nearly interrupted. <laughs> the, I nearly dropped the Trump the Trump card. Then oh, hey, I give oh. you that. Joke. <laughs> that was oh. I, I wasn't. I wasn't going to give him that. <laughs> I thought. You know what? No, he he doesn't. He doesn't deserve you that for that. I, I fucking love accidental puns. I was walking home from the city the other day, and I went past this shop that I've had a, a venison burger from. I mean, they asked, do, do we all know what venison is, yeah? Yes, dear, yeah. And I was asked, um, was they, were they good, them venison burgers? And I went, yeah, but they're a bit dear. That's not accidental. You meant that. <laughs> no, I genuinely didn't. You had to point it out to me. It was amazing. Me and me, uh, me and a mate, it's not accidental, but just on talking <laughs> stupid puns. I remember playing, oh. we're playing Dark Souls 2, I think it was, together. Mm-hmm. And we're playing, no, it must be Dark Souls 1. And we're in like a foresty area and we spent an hour just riffing on tree jokes to each other. <laughs> just an hour. For no reason. We were Can probably you get drunk. an hour of comedy out of trees? Yeah. Apparently we could. We kept branching out. I can't believe uh, <laughs> Oh, you missed mine. No. Yes. Oh, I, I don't care because Neil's was brilliant. I can't believe that. See, that's that probably the joke that started it and then it just blossomed um, oh, right hey. and on that on I that we'll uh, bring the, third the time, regular yeah, we're gonna bring the regular Belief. part of the podcast to an end i Belief think we're running quite nicely to time and mm. this has been th- thoroughly enjoyable um, you can obviously follow dan at mabroski on twitter Belief. column at column underscore hern myself at mcshanks and of Belief. course follow at god is a geek um also check out the website at god is a geek.com and uh you know, youtube.com forward slash God is a Geek, where we've got lots of great videos. Um, also, you know, if you want to check out this next part of the podcast, well, it's only going to cost you about £3, $5 a month, because <laughs> um, you can subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash God is a Geek, where you'll get a lovely extra half an hour segment of us guys every week. Well, not necessarily the same cast every week, just whoever's been on the podcast that week. We don't get a special... Should we get a special cast in for the... Probably, probably not, no. No? Mm. Are we not that... Bo- okay, fine. I yeah, you just get the rest so. of us talking more shit. Um, and remember, you know, if you go and do that, you can listen to... I can't remember what the story of Colum... Where Colum's going next week, so why he can't be on the podcast. Yes. Uh, this mysterious Hannah. No. And oh, maybe some not. more... I can't even tell Maybe some now. more tree jokes from myself. Um, so, on that note, we'll say bye. And uh, Patreon listeners, just about wait around a couple more seconds, and we'll be right back with you. Bye! Aha! Uh-huh. Uh-huh.